How's it going, everybody? Welcome. It's another episode of Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. Jeremy Lesniak here, joined by Andrew Adams. And on today's episode, we're going to talk about the surprisingly controversial subject. I don't know if it's controversial. <laughs> Learning martial arts from books. Okay, maybe it's a little controversial. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to get a hold of us because you hate everything that we say today, the best thing to do is to comment in the Facebook group, Martial Arts Radio. Page, not group, page. page. We used to run a group. Facebook made that grumpy. So now it's a page, Martial Arts Radio page. And we have conversation over there. We talk about the episodes. We drop some comments. We engage with all of you. You can also engage with us over social media at whistlekick and we drop mentions about every single episode that we ever do mm -hmm. so you can find that and you can say hey i agree with this or jeremy's hat is too red or whatever it is you can listen to our episodes you can watch our episodes they're all over the place if you want to help us in our mission to connect educate and entertain do something your martial arts school can join Whistlekick Alliance, which is an incredible program. You as an individual could join our Patreon and get bonus content. A lot of behind the scenes stuff. I dropped mm -hmm. something yesterday. Just help us out. Help us out. Martial arts makes the world a better place. You have the ability to help us help others. So let's talk about books. Well, let's talk about the elephant in the room right now, which oh. is, I don't know what camera to look at. <laughs> Do I look at this one? Do I look at this one? You know, you know what Do I'm realizing? I look at that one? I'm going to move that one because it's getting a lot of leaf. Oh. I'm going to move it over to that spot. Yeah. So why don't you talk to camera two for a moment? Two. We, we're numbering them. So we've sure. got camera one, camera two, camera one, yeah. camera two. And I've got to camera take one. that off the plane. Camera two. Now, usually when I do this camera one, camera two joke, I, I do it like this. Camera one, camera two. Because I watch Wayne's World. Camera one, camera two. <laughs> And now we've got camera three. Yeah. Okay, now that we've got that out of the yeah. way, let's talk about books. Okay. So here's what I find fascinating. Mm -hmm. The written word is the second longest duration method of preserving information and educating. The only one that's longer is telling stories, right? But it is the most hated method for learning anything about martial arts. Mm -hmm. And in fact, you would assume that that is restricted only to how to learn movement. You know, I'm going to learn this form. I'm going to learn how to be a better fighter. I'm going to learn these techniques from a book. But it's not. Because we've had plenty of authors on the show mm -hmm. who have written books. <laughs> Uh, the one that comes to mind the most is Matthew Pauly's biography of Bruce, Bruce Lee. Lee. Yep. And every few weeks, we get some hateful comment on that episode on YouTube, people tearing that apart. Somehow, as martial artists, we don't seem to embrace the written word. Well, and here's what I find interesting is that many traditional martial artists of of some various different styles will uh, laud the books written by their founder. Like as an example, this is just one example, but Gishin Funakoshi wrote a couple of books that if you're in Shotokan, they are like, oh, these are amazing books. You need to read these books. 20 Principles is over on that yep, shelf. Yep. So, um, you know, Karate Do Kyohan, mm -hmm. uh, like it, he is seen at, by a lot of Shotokan practitioners as not a, a visionary is not the word, but like someone that like, you need to read, if you're in Shotokan, yeah. you need to read these books. Sure. But one could make the argument. You're not quote. I'm using, using air quotes. Not, you're not learning martial arts by reading those books per se. Yeah. But you are learning about martial arts. Correct. Yep. And if we take that example mm -hmm. and we take someone out of Shotokan, or take a person who does not train in Shotokan. The things in those books are, I would say, almost equally applicable regardless of what style you train. I would agree. Yep. But how many people are we going to say, hey, you should read this book? And one of two things is likely to happen. 
I don't see the point in reading about martial arts. Mm -hmm. I don't see, you know, I'm not going to learn anything. Or I don't do Shotokan. Yeah. It's going to be, it's likely to be one of those two things. Now, here's the irony. The people who have progressed the furthest that we generally look up to the most in the world of martial arts have read all of the books. Yeah. We hear that from plenty of people who started training in the 60s and 70s that have come on the show, people that we think very highly of. We've heard from quite a few of them, not all of them, but quite a few of them have said, I was interested, I was fascinated, I went to the library and I checked out every book every, I could yeah, find. I read every book about I could. boxing or martial mm -hmm. arts, mm -hmm. wrestling, Bruce Lee, whatever it was, I got them all. Yep. And some of them are amazing at retaining that information. The, mm -hmm. the person I'm thinking uh, that comes to mind is Ian Abernathy. Like mm -hmm. he will just will be chatting, oh, you know, such and such wrote in this book this line. Um, Jesse, yeah, yeah. Jesse Enkamp is another one. Like the, yeah. the, you know, the, they've read so much and retained it. Um, and you know, I don't think that they are, I, I don't think anyone would argue that them knowing that material makes them less of a martial mm. artist. No, no, certainly not. It, it gives them more. Correct. Now I think it, we have to acknowledge that for a lot of people, Martial arts is a thing that they go and do a few times a week. And it is not the thread that connects every element of their lifestyle. Mm -hmm. But if you're watching or listening to this show, that's probably not you. Right? If you're willing to invest your leisure time to listen to us two ramble about martial arts, mm -hmm. you probably find some value in this whether it's entertainment or education, right? Hopefully it's connect, educate, and entertain. You know, there's a reason that's our slogan here. Books can do a lot of that too. Maybe you don't find the connection. Maybe you don't find the entertainment in the books, but you would find the education. And maybe you're not reading all of it. Maybe you're getting an audiobook version. Absolutely. There are lots of different ways to consume this. And I think because we went through this phase the majority of the time probably i would say the 80s 90s and 2000s maybe even through the 20 teens where we all recognized finding a decent instructor was better than reading the best book in terms of learning general martial arts mm. skills. Yeah. Well, I think that makes sense because if sure, let, let's break down books really quick into basic martial arts books into basically two camps. One is learning techniques and things, forms, whatever, and lots of those exist. And one is learning books on philosophy or just people's thoughts on martial arts. And those yep. are two diff very different books. Yep. Um, and so I think that makes a difference. So like you're going to listen to an audio book, it's probably not going to be a book on techniques, right. Right? right? But there are plenty of books on techniques. Absolutely. And prior to YouTube, most people who had developed movement-related things that they wanted to share with the martial arts community, it was either VHS turned DVD or it was books. Yep. And the nice thing about a book is you don't have to struggle to pause it in the right spot. Yep. You know, what is this movement? And there are... Some books are much better at teaching movement than others. Oh, of course. We, we sure. know that, right? But then something happened a few years ago. We all know what it was. We're recording this in 2024. And suddenly everybody went, wait a second. Mm -hmm. I actually can learn from a recording. And I would encourage you to apply that same open-mindedness to learning from a book. Yep. Are you going to learn the same things in the same way from a book that you would learn from being in an in-person class. No, no. Well, and if you're learning technique stuff, um, sure you can look at pictures or, or even if we extrapolated it out to videos and DVDs, or whatever, it's one thing to look at it, whether it's on a TV screen or in a book, but a lot of that stuff, you really have to work it with a person. Right, just to figure out, okay, how does the arm move and stuff? Mm -hmm. If we're looking at techniques, however, mm -hmm. 
I know from us doing martial arts radio for years that there are certain formats where some instructors will be more or less verbose. When an instructor is in front of a class, they are generally less verbose than if they were to break down a technique in a book, mm -hmm. especially knowing that they were, you know, they were going to be limited to a few images in that book. Mm -hmm. The point being, if you want depth of context, if you want nuance, you need both. You need that verbose explanation as well as the ideally in-person demonstration and correction that would come from a class. Yeah. Yep. I mean, here's a, a, a really cool kind of example. Um, so I run a Facebook group for people that are go that are trying to do a hundred day challenge of forms. Mm -hmm. And it, you know, I, I won't get into the specifics, but sure. to, to break it, basically the goal is to do a form regardless of what that form is a hundred days in a row. And if you miss a day, you have to start over and you have to video yourself and you have to upload it to the group and whatever. And there's a member of this group who said, you know what? I want to learn a bow form. Mm. I don't have a bow instructor. Mm. So he took Fumio Demura's book on bow and taught himself Suji no Kun. Mm. Um, and I know this form from, because I was taught by my instructor um, and he is learning the form from the book and you can see it. I mean, I, I, I do my version and I watch his version and they're very similar, but they're not the same. And the, you know, the best analogy that I can think of is learning to do a golf swing. Mm -hmm. If you were to take a snapshot of a golf swing, you'd have one with your arms up here. You'd have a snapshot of your arms at the bottom when it contacts the ball and you'd have one where your arms are here, but it's difficult to get that flow through. Right. Um, not impossible, but it would be difficult to, to demonstrate that. And when I watch him do the form, first off, that's way cool. Like good for him. That, yeah, it, 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 that's awesome. And he's done a great job with it, but the version I do not right, not wrong, just different mm -hmm. is a little more, flowing from one movement to the next. And when I thought about it, it, and this is kind of what sparked this idea of doing an episode on this, is it, it, it can be a little stagnant because you're looking at just pictures. Mm. It's a great point. Yeah, it really is. Um, as you're talking about this, right, as you're talking about this person learning this form, I'm, I'm, I'm imagining there are people saying, well, you shouldn't learn it that way. And this is where I come in with not letting perfect be the enemy of the good. Mm, that's a great If the point. alternative to learning it from a book is to not learn it, mm. is there knowledge that one should not possess because the, the standard at which that knowledge is understood is below a certain threshold? Mm. I would say there are things, but they are not in the martial arts world. Mm. If you were learning nuclear physics from a book and then maintaining a reactor, maybe that's not a thing you want to do because you can blow everybody up. Well, but if you are, you know, read the book though, at least get the knowledge of your nuclear reactor. Don't experiment in person at the reactor. Right. But that, that's what I'm talking about, right? Like working through that form yeah, yeah, yeah. is kind of that experimentation. And we do have these arguments within the martial arts world. And you and I have talked about it, this myth that there is bad self-defense that makes you less safe and mm -hmm. how ridiculous that is. I don't, I don't have an example of a movement, a technique, a uh, practice within the world of martial arts that someone could learn from a book that I'd rather they not learn. Yeah. The, the form that this person learned through the book. Yes. Does it look different from the one I do? Yes. Does it make his form any less meaningful to him? No, not at all. If, if, if Demero was, a, was still alive and had the chance to work with them, mm -hmm. would they find some corrections? Uh, I'm sure. Probably. But 
does it make it any less enjoyable for him who's learned it? No, absolutely not. And does it make him less of a martial artist because no. he learned it from a book? No, no absolutely not. And I, I, I think people would be hard pressed to argue that. A good martial artist is a diverse martial artist. We've mm -hmm. talked about that. And it doesn't necessarily apply to cross training, but it can. A good martial artist is going to utilize the resources that they have available to them. They are going to attend classes. They are going to watch videos. They are going to listen to things, read things, practice with different people, yep. and train on their own. And to cut one of those elements out with a sweeping gesture to say, this isn't good, is at best ignorant, at worst arrogant. Yeah, yeah, I would agree. And what, kind of a, as an aside, it was gr really, really cool to see him progress in learning it because mm -hmm. he didn't, he posted, a, you have to post a video every day. Mm -hmm. And there's no requirements. So, you know, when he started learning the forum, he posted his video and it was the first five or six moves. He mm -hmm. said, I'm just going to, I want to get these really good first. And he practiced those. And then a couple days later, he did like the first 10 moves. That's really And cool. now he's gotten through the whole thing. And, and he commented on one of my videos, like, I'm so glad that you did this, that this challenge exists because it, it helped me realize that I want to do this. Like mm -hmm. I wanted to learn, I wouldn't have learned this form if it hadn't been for this group, which is pretty cool. I don't know if there's more for us to really add here other than to encourage people to check out various books. A absolutely. Absolutely. You know, you, you, you drew a line down the middle of you can learn technique or you can learn philosophy. I, I, I mean, not that you that, can, but those are the basically the two kinds yeah, oh, of books. Oh, that I, I wholeheartedly agree. Yeah, yeah. And there's a reason that you don't see any of the books that Whistlekick releases go into technique. You know, just like our, our episodes really don't go into technique. We don't tell you how to punch and kick. We tell you why to punch and kick. We might tell you when to punch and kick, but how? That's not really what we're about. That's, that's up to you and your training. Yeah. And if you take a look at the books that we've released, uh, some of them are based on episodes, some of them are fiction, some of them are nonfiction. And it's, it's meant to give you philosophy and understanding and context for your training, however that looks for you yeah i mean i think the only thing that we would say is that if you're gonna punch you gotta do it with your hand if you're gonna kick you gotta do it with your foot you can't kick with your hand mm -hmm. i will go on the record right now whistle kick should say should perform. are you gonna go on a limb and say it you can't kick with your hand what if we're talking about someone adaptive who no oh, i knew you'd find a loophole okay fine okay i'll take it back right all right fine okay you do what you got to do, right? I've seen some absolutely <sighs> amazing forms practitioners who have had to make some rather dramatic modifications yeah, okay. due to you got how me. their body is put together. You got me. All right, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> you knew I was going to find a loophole. I know. It's all good. It's all good. I'm good at loopholes. Could have been a lawyer. To all of you out there, thank you for watching, for listening, for supporting if you have not done anything to support us recently, please consider doing so. And yeah, consuming these episodes is absolutely supportive. We are appreciative of that. We watch the numbers. We see the numbers go up and to the right, and that makes us excited. You can help us make those numbers go up and to the right even more by sharing an episode, maybe this episode, with a friend, with an instructor, with maybe new students. Hey, guess what? If you have a school and you have students, Maybe you cherry pick a few episodes for them from martial arts radio and say, Hey, you should listen we think also. you should check out this, this, and this, you know, maybe you sketch out the first six months of homework for that. Not a bad idea. There's a reason we do things like that. Mm -hmm. There's a reason we have a, a Matt chat instructor's guide for master hot kick. We're doing everything we can for you. Connect, educate, and entertain, get everybody training for six months. That's why we're here. It's what we do. Thank you for being part of it. Our email address is andrew at jeremy at whistlekick.com. Our social media at whistlekick. Whistlekick.com is the website. Whistlekickmartialartsradio.com is the website for this show. And that takes us to the end. Until next time, train, train hard, hard, smile, smile and have, have a great, great day. day. Yay. Okay. What? Here's my question for you. Okay. The, why is that camera <laughs> one 
and that camera too, but camera three is way over there. that's the third most important camera. But, but it should... This is the most important camera. It's it the second be, most important camera. See, as a drummer, sitting in a drum set, one, two, three. Tom number one. You're... That's a floor tom right over there. That should be the floor tom. One, two, three. But we can't rename them in the middle of the episode. We're not in the middle I, of the episode. I, we're, I, out. we're not. We're not in the episode. It's still recording. You know you're going to cut pieces of this and put it at the end. Yeah, probably. <laughs> okay, that was all. All right, thanks.